put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Time in Mexico. Movie review. There's really far too much plot for me to give particularly many details here. Also because it's frankly so hard to follow. You'll have to watch it several times just paying attention only to the plot in order to actually piece together all of the different, you know, who's betraying who and at what point, if, you know, to cross over to which side you know, to what end, you know, when is someone actually working for themselves, who are they working for before that, you know, it's really convoluted. But anyway, the bottom line is that this cartel, the Barillo cartel, wants to take over Mexico. I, yeah, I guess the entire country. It led by Willem Dafoe as Barilio, and yes, he does get to wig out just a little bit, you know, because we know he likes that when he plays the villain. Now, so yes, he, he wants to take over Mexico, of course, by having the president killed through a certain General Marquez, who has, you know, who's introduced in this particular movie, but he has a bit of a history with the mariachi. That's where he actually enters into it. Believe it or not, this is actually a film with the mariachi, even though for a lot of it you might be inclined to think otherwise. But yes, or at least he's, he's in it. I'm not sure I'd really call it his movie. Maybe Johnny Depp's movie. But yes, he... He has some history with General Marquez, and since Johnny Depp, who's a CIA agent, who I'm pretty sure is dirty, I don't think he's really dirty, yeah, he's, he's dirty, he hires El Mariachi to take out General Marquez because he doesn't want either Marquez or Barilio to take over too much power, something like that. Yeah, it's convoluted. Anyway, basically, yeah, El Mariachi gets, you know, you know, he, they keep pulling him back in, basically. And he, you know, he actually had a very nice and calm, peaceful life, uh, surrounded by the old people who craft guitars. Now, I should probably try to say the positives first, yet again. The... You know, the, the, the cast is star-studded, definitely, for, you know, really the only time in this series. You know, I already mentioned Depp and Defoe. You've got Mickey Rourke, who is always carrying around this tiny little dog. And he's like this... former criminal who's now the right-hand man of you know, Barilio, so he, and he's really, you know, he can't stand Barilio, and he can't stand the things he has to do for Barilio, so, you know, yeah, he's, he wants out of that. You've got, I don't know if this guy's actually all that well known, but Ruben Blades plays this FBI, former FBI agent, who wants, you know, revenge on Barilio for this partner of his, but he can't touch him through, you know, kind of direct legal means, you know, because Barilio is very careful. Then you've got Ava Mendez. It's not introduced in the film 
I don't even remember the acro the, the letters, but I guess it's a Mexico specific or yeah, something like that. You know, it's this this agency that she works for, and yeah, that's that's really about it. And she has history with Depp. You know, we get a return of Danny Trejo, and you know, just. That is awesome. I, I really like that Rodriguez brought him back. It's a different character. And this time he talks. And he somehow doesn't get less badass by virtue of that. And, you know, there's eight years between this movie and the one before it. And it shows on Danny Trejo's face. You know, he, he did look old. I mean, he, he looked like his face is not unlike No Man's Land, you know, and in this one, it's actually filmed, the entire film is shot with digital cameras, which get far more detail, of course, and just every glorious little crevice and nook and cranny of his face are just up there on the screen in all of their glory, and it's, it's just great to look at, you know, the, the man has, the, the man's face alone has so much character, you know, that, that really is great. I'm not sure there's that much else positive I can really say about it. I, I guess I just gotta dig in. I find this the most boring of all three, and it's actually, it's not because not enough happens, it's because far too much happens. And I'll admit, I mean, I have seen it a bunch of times, but still, I just, I can never follow what's going on, and instead the film just ends up exhausting, you know, the audience. It's bloated, really. It's, there's, there's far too much of everything, and it ends up with, you know, essentially none of it really working out. I mean, I, the film is not without good qualities. Johnny Depp's character is one of the best things about it. You know, he's, he's always walking around with these t-shirts with, you know, text print on, you know, the, the kind of, you know, the gag t-shirts that you buy online, you know, with, you know, jokes across them and stuff like that, and, you know, yeah, t-shirt shorts, and just walking around in these horrible disguises that everyone can instantly see through, and, yeah, it's just, and, and he has this gag where, and this, this isn't a spoiler, he, he wants to bring balance to Mexico, so he has to destroy the stuff that's too good, you know, to, to keep the balance. So in one scene he actually, he goes and kills the cook because the cook has, yes, done far too good of a job of cooking his slow roasted pork. So, yeah, you know, and yeah, just, he brings a lot of his quirk to the film, and it of course fits. This is quirkier than the second film. And it's also, the humor is even more warped. I will say also that this one tries for much more humor than the second one, and I'd say a good third of it at least falls flat on its face. You know, a lot of it just does not work. But it is also a film of really funny, you know, segments sometimes. The, the stuff that's good can be really good. There's this, and I, I don't think I can even really give an example other than, you know, the th killing the cook bit. That'll really, you know, you, you need to see it to really understand how it, it, it doesn't translate well. So if I was just going to explain it, it wouldn't have the same effect at all. But yes, the, the film is excessive. There are far too many characters, there are far too many subplots, there are far too many twists and turns. Just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know why Rodriguez thought that this was a good idea. It just, 
when you work for too long on something, you start to become blind to when it's done. And you might keep working on it for a long time. I've worked a little bit in film myself, you know, very... not... not on any kind of recognized level, of course, but I have worked with this and I, you know, I've seen it happen with my own eyes. You go blind to the qualities of your film and you think that you need to work harder on, you know, bringing them out and cutting away all the stuff that you don't need. And I can imagine that's what happened here. You know, there are, there's far too much plot. There are too many characters and subplots. There, you know, some of the action is just over-edited. It's, it's far too... You know, it's not quite like Michael Bay where it's too close and, you know, the editing is so fast that you can't see what's going on. In this, I guess you can always see what's going on, but sometimes the editing is so quick that you might not perceive it. You know, that basically, if you watched it a couple of times, you know, it's not like, you know, if you watch a Michael Bay movie, several times, you might still not be able to tell what the crap's going on in the action scenes. In this, you can basically tell, but your brain can't process it that fast. And then right after, he goes into this exposition -y scene where a ton of stuff is revealed and suddenly everything that we thought is now entirely unlike what it seemed before, and it just keeps going and going and going. The movie's only about 95 minutes long, but in those 95 minutes, it just strains your, you know, your ability to perceive information and to process anything so dramatically. You just, at, at the end of it, just, you know, and, and it actually, I find that you get overwhelmed by this film very early on, actually. But yeah, so there's, there's quite a bit of action. Many of the best things, many of the best gags, I guess, of the action... Rodriguez steals from himself, from the other two movies. You know, the... There's something similar to the bus bit of El Mariachi. This one has, you know, in, in Desperado, there's a scene where someone jumps down towards El Mariachi and El Mariachi shoots him. They do that exact same thing here. It's not even... It's... It's very, very similar. There, there's almost nothing to distinguish the two. I have no idea why he did this. I really am flabbergasted by that. The opening scene has the retelling of the myth, similar to how Desperado opens, but where Desperado has the charisma and delivery of Steve Buscemi, as well as just a, frankly, pitch-perfect, machoistic, modern, spaghetti western kind of, you know, excessive quality to it. In this one, it just, I don't know, it, I guess it's again that it's, it's excessive. There's, there's far too much going on in the, because it's not just telling the myth and kind of, you know, setting up the badassitude of El Mariachi. And, you know, with much less of it, when Steve Buscemi tells, and again, this is not a spoiler, when Steve Buscemi tells the myth or the legend in Desperado, you soon after find out, ten minutes later, you know he did so because he was trying to figure out if they, you know, if they were in the right place to hunt down Bucho. And he was also kind of, you know, yeah, he needed a scary story so that they, yeah, you know, it was a tactic. And this one is just kind of, well, we have exposition that we need to deliver, and I guess we should kind of, well, it's, it was probably a good idea to retell sort of the legend or the myth, and some of what he does with it is clever, but... It's, yeah, it's it's too heavy on the exposition, the scene, and it just, 
it switches so many times with, you know, suddenly something completely different is going on, where in Desperado we have this just, it is, it, it is a story, you know, it's a, f you know, full-on story. Someone, a guy walks into a bar, and he tells a story that, you know, by the end of him telling the story, everyone's paying attention to him, after a lot of them kind of laughing at him, and just say, ah, cook get out of here with that, that that did not happen. You know, in this, it just, it has nowhere near the same effect. Now, I do like what Rodriguez did with it, because he kind of, you know, the myth in the many retellings of it have picked up a lot of, you know, details, and sort of, you know, it's, it's gotten, it's no longer anywhere near a credible story, you know, and yeah, that also works with, but, excuse me, something Rodriguez messes up with is, and again, you know, when you look to, when you're working too closely to something, you go blind to its qualities, he actually has the storyteller admit that, and that just completely, I mean, because you would never do that, you would never actually, when you're retelling a legend, you don't stop and say, ah, I guess this part doesn't really make sense. That, you don't, no, I, yeah, I, I don't think I can really make it clear. That just, that is extremely counterproductive and counterintuitive. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You're trying to make a big deal out of this story. So, and I like Cheech Marin, but having him retell the myth, I, it just, it's way beyond his abilities, you know? Yeah. The acting is pretty good, I suppose. The characters, far too little time is spent with any of them first to particular develop. I mean, Johnny Depp you kind of like, but that's just because of how quirky he is. Except for him, I mean, if this is the first movie you watch with the mari mariachi, you're not going to care about him. You're not going to care about anyone. You know, the like the one thing, I guess you sort of care if the president makes it out okay because there's, uh, he seems to be a good guy, you know, but that's about it. You know, actually, come to think about it, in at least one action scene, it's difficult to tell what's going on, you know, and in, yeah, a couple of them, you're actually wondering, wait, who is, you know, Let's say it's Mariachi fighting, because it's not only him, again, in this. But, yeah, let's say he's the one gunning people down. And you're wondering, who is he shooting? And, you know, why? And, you know, a bunch of it is eventually explained. But, yeah, it just... The music... Very mixed bag. I suppose most of it does still have that sort of Mexican and Spanish flavor... And I will admit that only one track, although it, you know, much to my dismay, is this sort of techno. It just does not fit at all. But, I don't know, a lot of it just doesn't seem to really get you into the scene that it's used, you know? El Mariachi is joined by two fellow mariachis yet again. Or, well, again. Just nothing on Campa and Kino. They have just nothing. You know, one of them's Enrique Iglesias. I probably mispronounced that. I don't mind his singing, but the dude is not an actor. Actually, scratch that. On Two and a Half Men, he did fine, so I don't know what's wrong here, but he does terrible here. And the other guy is even worse. They're just, they're, they're basically reading their lines, you know, it's just, the, actually I think that the other guy might not actually speak English fluently, because some of what he says is just, it's like he's reading it off cue cards, you know, and when Peter Marquardt did that, I don't know, I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but to me that sounded much better than what's happening in this movie, you know, and also with some of this, I don't know, I guess you might not be able to tell, especially if it's the first time viewing, but 
several things did not work out as Rodriguez had planned, and that has happened before on movies. With both El Mariachi and Desperado, he patched the, you know, he patched over those things, and it worked out fine. In this, I don't know quite why, because he does still basically try to fix, you know, try to think on his feet, but it just does not work quite as well. There's, there's this role that was supposed to be played by an actor. I don't remember why that actor couldn't, but instead it's given to, you know, Depp, and it's just... I don't know, just really didn't work, I didn't think. That might be more or less it. This one is epic when, you know, it's, well, yeah, this is the epic one, you know, as was, you know, Tarantino told Rodriguez that, you know, you gotta make a third one, and it's gotta be the epic one. It's gotta be your The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. You know, and he tried. He tried. Part of what also messes up the action is in in the second in in Desperado, a couple of times when people are shot, they go flying through the air. Because it only happens a couple of times, it really has an effect when it happens. In this, it happens in every single action scene. I'm pretty sure every single action scene. And then there are just these you know, tiny little bits that just... There's one action scene that erupts very suddenly, and all of a sudden there are guys on motorcycles, and I just have to wonder, where the heck did they come from? They couldn't possibly have anticipated that this would happen, and it just, yeah, it, it makes no sense. bringing back El Mariachi just to have him, you know, go for revenge yet again. I don't know. I guess that's what there is room for in the character, which really says something about how you know, weakly written the character is. But, yeah, I don't know how we would have brought him back, you know, otherwise either. It should also be noted that Salma Hayek, she does appear in this, but she was killed in between movies. You see it in a flashback, but, you know, Rodriguez actually, I believe in the commentary track, falsely attributes this as the only movie where even the flashbacks have action. Robert, I like ya, got tons of respect for ya, but so does The Terminator. Anyway, there are a bunch of flashbacks that really just barely make coherent sense and you kind of gotta piece together exactly when things happened and why they happened and stuff like that. It's basically, you know, Rodriguez had a couple of cool action scenes, well he thought they were cool, that he wanted to shoot and so he figured, hey, I could do two movies in one and there are a bunch of flashbacks to a movie that never existed that was supposed to take place between this Desperado and this one. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it. I guess it's fine to watch at least once. If for no other reason, Johnny Depp's character. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.